Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I didn't test this out in advance. My name is Matt O'Donnell. I'm from 6ABC Action News. I'm the morning guy. I've been up since 2.21 in the morning. I will be a very alert host for you. <laughs> Welcome to the Mayoral Candidates Forum on Hospitality and Tourism. We have seven candidates, well, six right now. One is missing at this point. Uh, but seven candidates in all, one Republican, six Democrats, all on the ballot for May 19th, which is about a month away. That is the primary day in Philadelphia. The last day to register to vote is Monday. Hold your applause as I introduce all the candidates here at the table. Nelson Diaz, Lynn Abraham, Anthony Williams, Doug Oliver, James Kenney, and Melissa Murray Bailey. They are all here to address opportunities and challenges in our travel and tourism industry. The Mayoral Candidates Forum on Hospitality and Tourism is hosted by the five major tourism industry organizations. The Greater Philadelphia Hotel Association, the Independence Visitors Center, the Pennsylvania Convention Center, the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Visit Philadelphia. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics says these organizations support 65,000 leisure and hospitality jobs in Philadelphia and generate $5.8 billion in annual economic impact and $400 million in state and local tax revenue. Basically, you guys are a big deal. Here in the audience, staff, board members, and other stakeholders of the five hospitality agencies, welcome, and it's my pleasure to be your host. I will ask questions about issues that you care about. I will introduce each candidate. Each will get one minute for an opening statement. Then I will choose one question for each candidate from a pre-made stack of cards, which I have right here. Each card has a different question. There is no order. No candidate will receive the same question. Each candidate has two minutes to answer and may comment on other questions during that time. There will be no rebuttal time. Timekeepers will let the candidates know when 30 seconds are up and when time expires, <laughs> says time. We thank each candidate in advance for respecting the time limits. We hope to get through at least two rounds of questions. And as you know, we are streaming this live on 6abc.com. Also, if you're on Twitter, you can use the hashtag Philly Tourism Forum. Let's begin with opening statements. First up, Doug Oliver. Right in the middle. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, with my minute, I'd like to say that my campaign platform is predicated on three things, uh, schools, jobs, and fairness. In a city like Philadelphia, I think we can all agree that schools is number one. In a city where we have some who have and some who don't, the bridge is education and also jobs, employment in the city with 28% um, unemployment. Fairness, the issue that some have and some don't, and having a leader who understands that. What I like about tourism and hospitality is it touches on all three of them. Uh, people test drive before they buy. They come here to visit, they come here to check us out, and if they like what they see, they consider moving here. When they do, we expand our tax base. We then have the resources we need for all of the things, including schools here in the city of Philadelphia. With respect to jobs, the 65,000 jobs here gives people an opportunity for careers uh, where they can uh, have transferable skills that allow them to go in any direction they want. And with respect to fairness, we're not choosing between those who have and those who don't have. We're getting the money from people who don't even live here and don't use our services. That's a tremendous benefit for us in the city with all of the resources that come, and I'm happy to be here with you all this morning. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Lynn Abraham. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, this is an auspicious place to be. Looking out the window uh, to my right, your left, we can see the Independence Hall, the cradle of liberty of this country. The, the thought of that is not lost on us, that we re represent the probably most historic mile anywhere in the country. And that's why, in part, our tourism and travel and hospitality industry is so important, a driver of economic development and growth as it is. <clears throat> I'm a big booster. I love Philadelphia. And I love to see it grow and prosper. Uh, last year, we had a tremendous amount of uh, tourism. I'm happy that the Convention Center seems to be at labor peace. 
Uh, I'm delighted that we are seeing our revenues grow as people discover Philadelphia. I'm excited about the Pope coming and a million people or more, maybe even two million, discovering us for the first time. So Philadelphia is going to be the center of attention of the world over the next two years with the Democratic Convention coming in in 2016 and beyond. So I'm delighted to be here. I'm running for mayor, and I ask for everybody's support. Thank you, Ms. Abraham. Anthony Williams. Thank you. Good morning. Um, Philadelphia is assuming uh, its position on the world stage. A significant number of high-level events are going to occur over the next few years in Philadelphia. And that coordination between the next mayor and the folks in this room is very significant for all of us. Understand this. This is not just simply about tourism. This is about an interview globally and nationally. People will decide across America whether they want to move their business here or whether they want to move themselves internationally, whether they want to do business here or move their companies here. In order to do that, the next mayor has to work with you as a significant partner. I will promise you the following things. Philadelphia will be a cleaner city. We will invest $15 million in new equipment. It will be $5 investment in car registration so that you can see once a week cleaning the streets of Philadelphia. So not only tourists, but Philadelphians will feel much cleaner about themselves. We will have an economic plan for growth so that when they land here, small business, energy hub, and technology are part of the conversation that everyone has when we talk about not just simply tourism, but economic development. And lastly, this mayor will travel with you. It's not a junket when the mayor arrives in other parts of the world. It's, a, it's, an, it's an endorsement of what this means and this room means. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Williams. Melissa Murray Bailey. Hi, my name is Melissa Murray Bailey. I'm the Republican candidate for mayor. Um, so, wondering if there's one or two people out there who are able to vote for me on May 19th. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm in this election um, because I really want Philadelphia to be considering their election in November. I want us to bring checks and balances to the system. And through all these mayoral forums, we're asking the same questions we've been asking election over election. Um, and you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I'm bringing a new and fresh perspective in looking at these issues and bringing common sense and business answers to what we can be doing so that we can streamline some of our services so we can have more money for things that are actually going to generate more money for the city. I spend a lot of my time traveling. Um, and so uh, growing up in New Jersey, I came to Philadelphia twice a year on our class trips. Um, and I'm one of those people who tried before I bought um, and found Philadelphia was the destination for me to raise my family. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Jim Kenney. Good morning. And uh, I've spent most of my career in council dealing with everyone in this room on issues relative to tourism and hospitality. It is not just a feel good, have fun thing. It is an industry that we need to foster. It's a third of our employment. Uh, and, and the one thing I'd, I recognized this morning as I was getting dressed to come here, I saw two commercials for Williamsburg, one for Florida, and I think one for Michigan in a space of two hours. Uh, we have to invest in advertising the city. And I think in Harrisburg, when we used to get the help we used to get to advertise our city, to be present in, uh, in many areas of our, of our country uh, for people who want to come here, uh, that has gone away. And if the city of Philadelphia does not put its own money into an advertising campaign to promote this city, then we're not going to be successful. What's happened to the convention center, I think, is tremendous. And we need to, do, we need to promote that through advertising on television and other, and other avenues. But we need the money to do it. If the state's not going to put it in, I'm going to put it in. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Nelson Diaz. Well, I decided to run for mayor because of the issues of the school system and how chaotic it is. And I want to fix the schools, which I think impact on the economy of the city. And I want to make sure that every child in the city gets an education so that you have a workforce that can get into this industry. I have worked with almost all of you. I was on the board of the Pennsylvania Convention Center. I was the co-chair of PHL, which used to be called MAC. Uh, I've done the marketing activities. I've worked with the hotel industry. I've lobbied for the 1.5% interest so that we can get some of that money into the industry so that we could use that for marketing so you have a stable money fund to be able to do that. Sometimes it isn't enough, but I have to tell you that with the fact that we're having the convention here, and it started basically with the Republican convention where we brought about so many new hotels and a new industry and new opportunities in terms of marketing the city, now with the Pope and then the coming of the... Uh, 
Democratic Convention, we're going to have more opportunities. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. Now to our questions. You each have two minutes to answer. First one up, Jim Kenney. Mr. Kenney, work rules changed at the Pennsylvania Convention Center last year. Some unions were locked out. Others, led by electricians union head John Doherty, got jobs. Is it better now? Should some of those unions that were locked out be allowed back in? Well, it's certainly better now. And despite the fact that unions get the reputation or have the reputation or it's promoted in the media and by some of the candidates on this on the stage as to how bad these unions are, I will tell you that was the most unprecedented action I have ever seen in this city where tr three or four major unions crossed two major union picket lines in order to make this center a better place. And, and you know, there was a long time coming and there was a lot of grief and aggravation that went on in that center over many, many years. And finally, those guys wised up and they re realized that they were spiting themselves by not cooperating with management and getting this done. I had ple pleaded with the Carpenters Union to please sign that agreement. I talked to him on a number of times right before the deadline and for whatever reason he decided not to. He's a friend and, and I, I like him and I wish he had signed on, but, but uh, no one waits for progress. Progress moves on and that center is now booking opportunities and groups that promised they would never come here ever again in their lifetime and they're signing back up again. So kudos to the guys who had the courage to cross a picket line to do what's good for the entire community and not just for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Our next question goes to Nelson Diaz. The city, as you know, has many priorities, schools, policing, infrastructure, taking out the trash. Where does supporting tourism and hospitality fall on your list of priorities? Where do these people fall on your list of priorities? There's no question that it's one of my top priorities because it is one of the major industries of the city. It is, it's impossible to be able to receive these revenues for me to have worked in each one of these areas and to promote I, and I've brought conventions here that are diverse that other people have never brought, like the NCLR and, and some of the other uh, minority conventions that come throughout the country. Why? Because I believe the city is the Bedford of all history and then also the opportunity for us to show off that we have a walking city and we have a community that is supportive of it. And the press has been very, very supportive of all the conventions that have come here and have covered them uh, in a great way. I disagree with one thing in terms of the fact that there are too many unions in there which raise the cost of running the conventions in the convention center. There should be a one pro pro process opportunity for us to work with a union and not them all fighting about just plugging the, uh, the outlets and having us pay uh, a numerous amounts of money just for plugging an outlet. There should be a real freedom to be able to work through some of the minor things and that's why our conventions cost more and some people won't come here because of the cost of these conventions. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. Our next question goes to Lynn Abraham. Every time something bad happens in Philadelphia, outside media outlets mention that thing with Santa Claus being booed <laughs> at the Eagles game. Does the city have a perception problem? And if so, how would you change it? I don't get the sense from traveling around the country that Philadelphia has a bad reputation at all. Um, I know that we are known as the Boo Birds, but um, that's just a, I think that's just a passing, uh, 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 sort of a passing fad that uh, is, is overtaken by destination promotion. I think Philadelphia, it's hard for us to realize how much really Philadelphia is promoted around the country and our logo is out there and the XOXO on all of our billboards. I think we don't have a perception problem at all. But I do believe that we have to make sure that our go state government steps up and restores uh, the position of a tourism director, whatever the name of that person or those people are called. The state has an obligation too because travel and tourism just doesn't affect Philadelphia. It enhances uh, and it, it, um, grows the economy of the surrounding counties. Pennsylvania is a fabulous state and Philadelphia and the state do best when we join forces together and promote uh, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania as a destination. Uh, and I think that um, I think that the enhancement of Philadelphia is uh, obvious. I mean, why would the Pope come to Philadelphia if we had such a bad reputation? Why is tourism and marketing up dramatically? Why is our hotel occupancy rate, even on the weekends, up dramatically? Why are more conventions coming here? 
and that is that we are doing a tremendous job of marketing and we have to do even more because every city, every state has a great uh, opportunity for tourism. I think the convention center business will it be enhanced by the DNC, by the NAACP, by the just welcoming nature that all of the participants in this room have spread around extending goodwill, doing a great job of marketing, and say, come to Philadelphia, we love you. Make a night of it, make a week of it, come and do business in Philadelphia, we're open. Thank you, Ms. Abraham. Our next question to Anthony Williams. Philadelphia International Airport is obviously a very important part of tourism and hospitality. Would you look to sell PHL, and if not, how would you look to improve it? Well, one, I want to thank you for being the moderator this morning, because it's early in the morning, and your voice I mean, it has stunned us all this morning. I don't think of it. Um, so the, the airport is an asset that the city should maintain. Uh, we should not sell it. Um, and most big airports are not sold and not run by municipalities. The question is how we more effectively integrate those relationships in business, economic development, planning, tourism, the like. And I think, frankly, that we're moving in that direction, not just as a city. Understand the Philadelphia airport is a regional airport. And we have to have a plan from a regional perspective about how you expand it, how you improve it. I think they've done extensive studies on how to do it, and I think that the city and the, and the state are frankly beginning to make investments in that area that we haven't seen in a lifetime. So I think the, the airport is on the rise, much work to be done, but I think it's an asset that the city wants to maintain and the region will also want to maintain. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Melissa Murray Bailey, our next question. We brought up already the fact that the Democratic National Convention is coming to town next year. How should the taxpayers support blockbuster events such as these? in terms of money? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't thought much about that one. Um, I think the taxpayers should support these types of events by welcoming outsiders into Philadelphia. Uh, moving into Philadelphia just about three years ago, uh, we're not a very open arms type community. Um, and when visitors come in, uh, they need help getting around. If you're down in the in SEPTA, it's really hard to figure out how you get across town. It doesn't exactly say where you're going, and sometimes you need to pat someone on the shoulder and say, hey, which way to the visitor center? Which way to the Liberty Bell? Or I need to get to the convention center. Um, and I, so I think as taxpayers, we stand to gain a lot if the tourism business grows, because we'll have more revenue coming in. Um, and a lot of people's perception of a city is about how the people treated them when they came here. Um, so I think that's the first and foremost thing um, that we can do. And I would venture to say that we don't have a great reputation um, when it comes to that. When I was uh, telling my global clients and my friends that I had decided to move from Singapore to Philadelphia, um, not a single person said, good for you. Most people said, why? You could live in New York, you have lived in Australia, Singapore, DC, why are you going to Philadelphia? Um, and I have all the reason in the world to come here, not just because my family is here and I'm from here, but I really do believe in the future of Philadelphia and that we're moving ourselves forward. Um, so that's the responsibility for all of us to be out there as ambassadors for the city. And I think the mayor leads the charge in those efforts. Thank you, Ms. Bailey. Everyone pat yourselves on the back. We have made it to round two. <laughs> Jim Kenney, we've mentioned the DNC. We've mentioned the fact that Pope Francis is coming to town. These are great things. If you become mayor, what do you see as the next big thing that Philadelphia should strive for? Well, we've talked about the Olympics potentially. Um, I think that that is a, a big picture. And some folks have said, well, maybe we shouldn't think that big. But I disagree. I think we should continue to be in line or to try to stay in line for something like that. But I think <clears throat> in addition to the big things, and, and I'm, I'm just thrilled that Pope Francis is coming as a, as a product of St. Joe's Prep and the Jesuits, having a Jesuit pope in Philadelphia is just an awesome thing. It's very inspiring. Uh, but I also think we should be looking, in, in addition to the big things, to the smaller things. I think that we need to continue to fill that center, uh, those two buildings, that center, in every way possible. And a lot of the things that I've been pursuing or a little more below the radar is, is, is youth sports, having youth tournaments in our, in our city where, where, where young people have to come to play basketball or volleyball and they come with their families uh, and their families stay in hotels. It generates hotel nights. 
Uh, it generates a, a good feeling where people can go around and walk around our city and really get to know it. Uh, you know, the big things are important. And the DNC, the DNC will be paid for mostly with outside dollars that are contributed through the party. And our job as a, as, as a mayor and our job as a city is to make sure everyone is safe, to make sure everyone is happy and, and, we're, and held uh, looked at to in a hospitable way. Uh, we need to put our best, our best face on uh, and, and greet the world. Uh, so, but the, I would think the Olympics would probably be something that I would love to pursue and continue to stay in line to try to get it. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. I would like to apologize to Doug Oliver because we did not offer him a question in the first round, so he is next. Mr. Oliver, what is the hospitality industry doing right and what is it doing wrong? Offer your critique. Uh, we'll start with what's going right. I think the hospitality industry understands the importance of investment. Um, I don't think anybody thinks a million dollars is a little bit of money, but in the big scheme of things for a city this size, uh, it's not enough. Um, if you look at any business that does well, they spend almost 3 4% of their revenue uh, promoting themselves. Uh, the basic marketing mix, the, the product, the price, the placement, and the promotion, we've got an amazing product. Uh, the price of Philadelphia and what you get for the dollar that you spend here is amazing. We got those two things down pat, and I think this industry does a good job of recognizing that and then works very well on the, on the promotion and the placement of that promotion in places that will generate a return uh, for the investment of those dollars. An area where I think the industry could do a little bit better is promoting neighborhoods. Um, one of the best parts of our city is our diversity, um, all of our commercial corridors, um, so much of our tax revenue comes from small business, and those small businesses are often international. I think communicating to the rest of the world, the rest of the country, uh, the rest of the country, the rest of the world, uh, what you get here in our neighborhoods, the affordability of those neighborhoods, and the fact that you can come here and still feel right at home is something uh, that we could do a better job of, uh, including having tours that leave Center City and go into the neighborhood so they can actually see uh, what doesn't get that much attention. Um, if there was one last thing, I'd partner with colleges and universities. They do a lot of work to uh, promote themselves, um, but promoting themselves in the context of Philadelphia, I think, leverages their dollars with ours uh, so that people know that they can come here not only to learn, but then they can play here and then they can live here, meaning our schools, uh, they can have a job, they can start businesses here, and uh, sort of stretching those tourism dollars to start talking about those other real-life issues are things that I think the industry could do a little better job of. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Again, my apologies. Nelson Diaz, should you as mayor have a hospitality cabinet, who would be on it and what would they do? Well, I, I want to make sure I don't lose any votes, so uh, I won't mention any names. But I have to tell you that people within the marketing uh, and tourism area are incredibly talented and capable. Um, those thoughts of the pajamas uh, going at night uh, and taking the hotels for the weekend and, and those thoughts about the fact that it's a walking city and, and so many under innovations have been incredibly uh, fascinating and the fact that they go to Harrisburg uh, frequently to try to get money for the convention and visitors activities is, is really for me something that I applaud. But one of, one of the issues that I think uh, we have to do is that we have about 40 to 48 percent of the population that commutes out to work. And so we, we've got to be able to increase business and small business opportunities down here. And we also have to be able to promote and have the 28 percent that is in the poverty rate to be a part of the industry and to be able to educate them and get into the hospitality industry so that they can also have an opportunity to benefit from the largesse, a lot of it goes up to the state. They get, a, they get about 9% of the money that the convention center uh, gets. So not all of it stays here. So what we do here and the benefits that he here accrue to the entire state. I hope you realize that, that we're also doing the state a favor. So they should be very, very willing to continue to promote and to provide with tax opportunities so that the marketing that we do not only comes from these centers, but it also comes from the mayor and, and the mayor's cabinet. The mayor's cabinet should have a uh, city representative and uh, a commerce and a finance director that is totally involved together with this industry and should be on their boards. And likewise, we should be inviting many of them 
to many of the activities that the mayor has in terms of planning future economic development. Our next question goes to Lynn Abraham. We're talking about hotels here. We have more than a dozen new ones in the pipeline, many of them expected to be finished in 2017. Do we, with high ambitions to have even bigger conventions, need even more hotels? And what would you do as mayor to prevent many of these hotels from sitting empty in the event of an economic collapse like the one we saw in 2009? Well, uh, obviously, uh, market forces are going to drive uh, hotel construction. However, <clears throat> one of the big problems about Philadelphia is that uh, tourism and marketing people all always complain that there isn't enough uh, hotel capacity. My guess is that the DNC will test this market very, very strongly. I know that this is not a, a problem unique to Philadelphia. I've been to six Democratic uh, national conventions, and I was always staying in the next state. It was a, I, 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 I was so far out of Denver, I, thought, I think I was in Colorado Springs. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think this is always a challenge. Uh, and I think the hotel industry best knows how to gauge that, but certainly um, that is going to be uh, fought out. And besides which, I think that hotels wouldn't build here if they didn't have a need or want of capacity. And a capacity that uh, comes across all economic lines. For example, not everybody wants to stay at a five-star or five-diamond hotel. People want to stay in bed and breakfasts, which is a thriving industry in Philadelphia. People want to stay in budget hotels, medium hotels. And I think the marketing and tourism industry is being very wise in not only promoting Philadelphia as a destination city, uh, but getting our name known throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, country and the world. I think that in the event of a, an economic collapse, I mean, a real economic collapse, there's almost nothing that people will be able to do to enhance people to come Philadelphia if there's a stock market crash or something like that. However, an economic downturn can turn into an advantage if we promote Philadelphia as an affordable, safe, wonderful city with enough bathrooms for the public, better signage. Uh, well, and I believe we're welcoming. I, I I'll go up to strangers every day in various languages, which I'm all poor in, and try to help them. But I think that as much as I can help them in the foreign language. But I do believe that the hotel industry uh, needs to, to consider all of those things. And the one thing they're battling against, frankly, uh, as an aside, is sort of aggressive homelessness begging, which has really become a problem for tourism. So we have to address that along the way. Anthony Williams, the roads are filled with potholes. Yeah. That's pretty obvious. Uh, many of them in the city of Philadelphia. SEPTA always needs improvements. How do you get the money to do these things, and where are your priorities when it comes to improving transportation in the city? So I proposed a $5 increase on your vehicle registration, and it would go directly towards filling potholes in Philadelphia, maintaining streets. I mentioned making Philadelphia a cleaner place. And so the things that a mayor actually can do, I talk about in a plan and have a vision, and by the way, a means to get there without raising hotel taxes. You will not raise hotel taxes to fill in the sins of mismanagement of our industry, I mean, of, of, of what we do in the budget. I use the balance of my time. I, I, I'm just compelled to do this. I apologize. But this is maybe the Democrat versus Republican. I don't understand why anybody would be questioning why you would move to Philadelphia. My position is, why not? I talk to a lot of people who love this city. When you run off Jay-Z's here with the Pope in the same space, I'm not sure who's going to, going to miss in between you. We are the fastest growing city with regard to millennials in the nation. We are a hot spot. And so I don't understand. Maybe somebody in Singapore in the neighborhood missed the moment, but we are it, OK? We are hot. And so this industry is the backbone of what's going to make it even hotter. We're going to support it moving forward. We're not going to tax it out of existence. We're going to make the streets cleaner, and we're going to do potholes. Because my wife has had two flat tires in the last month, and it's cost me a lot of money. So thank you. <laughs> Melissa Murray Bailey. How can you link the unemployed to jobs in the hospitality industry, and would these jobs pay enough? I think first I might comment that, unfortunately, perception is reality. Um, and I did choose to move here um, because I see all of the potential, um, and I want to be an ambassador for that so that people can see it. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about our airport. Um, because if we really want to be an international destination like we're talking about, our airport actually needs to be able to service international destinations. Um, so there's a lot that we can do there to improve our perception. The reality is great, but it's the perception. And we need to think about our brand. 
um, and the marketing that goes along with the brand of Philadelphia and make sure that we're marketing things that are distinct to Philadelphia um, and not just saying what every other city um, is saying out there. Uh, when we talk about the poverty rate and jobs in the hospitality industry, I think that's one of the things that makes the hospitality industry so unique and so special to the city because it offers jobs across the whole spectrum um, for Philadelphia citizens. Um, so we need to look at what are things that people can do who are coming right out of high school. How can we be connecting high school students with jobs in the hospitality industry? Is that things through high school career fairs um, where we can let people know what their opportunities are? And so as we continue to improve our brand and improve our perception and get more and more people coming into the city, that's going to allow for jobs. And so we just need to make sure that we're marketing those jobs effectively um, to the people who need them most. Doug Oliver. It's tough to compete with a lot of other cities to get big conventions because some of these other cities offer a lot. In fact, sometimes the whole store, uh, money, uh, other options. Do you think that Philadelphia should provide a war chest for this purpose as seed money? And where would the money come from to insert into that war chest? That's a good question. Um, I think the less you have to offer, the more incentives you have to give. I think that we as a city have so many different reasons to be here that we don't have to set aside as much for those purposes. I think it's useful to have it in those events when you need it. If it, for example, came down to Philadelphia or Chicago for DNC and we needed some incentive, I don't think you want to lose that convention just because you didn't have a couple of extra dollars. But for the most part, I think Philadelphia is a fantastic place to be, and I think people know that already. Um, I think the same thing about tax abatements and how we develop sometimes uh, it's a tool to, to generate development, but once that development occurs, we can take that abatement and put it someplace else to spur more development. You don't get rid of the tool, you just apply it differently. So I think having some resources on hand, available in a war chest, if you will, uh, for a rainy day, but I think we should hold on to it and let us leverage the benefit of the things we already have, our parks, our restaurants, our sports teams, our open space, um, our nightlife, our, you know, just so many different things that, that we bring to the table, affordability, uh, access, a bridge between New York and D.C., uh, Harrisburg. We're right in the middle of everything, and a lot of folks know that. So um, I don't want to incentivize too much what would already occur, but we need to be prepared to do so in the event that we do have to from time to time. Jim Kenney, the homeless, we want to help them. The, the city does. We have many shelters. When tourists arrive, though, tourists don't necessarily like to encounter panhandlers and other people such as that. So how do you find a balance between the two? Well, first, I think you have to identify when you say homeless, there's many levels of homelessness. Uh, they generally, people who are homeless, for the most part, and we remember when we were younger, uh, the, the bag ladies that would be in the, in the city, they're for the most part under, in, in, in shelter, in, home, in, in project home and places like that. The people you see on the street who are asking for money are generally addicted individuals who have a place to stay. It may not be the most, most wonderful place to stay, but they they're have a, sh a roof <laughs> over their head and they're out there feeding their addiction. We have to work with the advocate community and the people who know this, this, this issue better than the government sometimes on how we approach folks. Every time, you cannot sweep people off the street. You cannot just you know, get people out of, the, out of there because understandably, the advocates for those folks will go into federal court and they will stop that. We'll wind up having a consent decree and perhaps paying a fine. So we have to integrate with the advocates, advocacy community and our social service people, the ability to go out and to, and to engage these folks and try to figure out what it is that th is keeping them out there, what addiction that they have. The other issue for us is we have a disgraceful situation with homeless veterans. Most of the, a lot of these guys out in the street are veterans, and that's, it's disgraceful to have served your country and then be outdoors as, you know, panhandling on the street. So we gotta figure out how we integrate the available services through the Veterans Administration, through our social service agencies, and through the advocacy community. You cannot just dictate this problem away. You need to deal, deal with it in a sensitive uh, way, and you need to deal with it in an effective way. Uh, and I think that if we continue to do that uh, with those folks, we'll be successful. Uh, but there's, you know, the government can't just crack down on, on folks who are out there because they have a right to be in the space as everyone else does as, as Americans. Uh, so we need to use our, utilize our resources to continually deal with the problem. It's, it's going to be a persistent problem, but we have to make it the best situation that we can make it. Nelson Diaz, a quick question for the audience. How many use Uber or Lyft? And 
candidates too, I guess. <laughs> uh, would you be a friend to Uber and Lyft? We've seen them run into a lot of trouble trying to use their car sharing apps in Philadelphia and have their drivers in here. Would you be a friend to those car sharing apps? I use Uber. There's no problem. I use taxis. I use public transportation for everything. You want to see all my cards? I have them with you. Um, all my tickets for every public transportation system there is. Um, and it's so important to be able to make sure that they're clean, that we can use them to promote that the drivers are knowledgeable of the city. When they say a museum, it's not just a Franklin Museum, it's the Museum of Art or it's the Barnes. And so they need to be educated also as to what's available and where you can go and you got to have them clean. And you have to have access to be able to use it either credit cards or other means of payment because some of them won't take your, and, and, and today very few people walk around with money. Um, and so you need that kind of viability. Um, and then some of these Uber uh, drivers also can uh, come back for you because they have a lot more time on their hands, unlike some of the taxi drivers. So that you can develop a relationship with some of the Uber guys, and I think that really would be helpful in terms of the, of the tourism that occurs here. Um, there were comments made relating to the, to the convention center in terms of the labor movement, but I got to tell you, when I was on the convention center board, the biggest problem we had was the fights between all of the unions so that we can essentially be able to price out the work that was necessary there. And I would just hope that uh, one of the uh, uh, benchmarks of the next mayor is that we have peace in this valley, that we have peace in the opportunities to make sure that the convention center, that they see it as their convention center also, and they see it as the economic engine of the city of Philadelphia, which, is, which it has been. And, uh, and I'm very proud of the expansion that we can bring so many other types of convention here from all over the world. And we have to make sure that we fix that labor issue. And I would be one that would make sure that that would happen. Lynn Abraham, some cities have hospitality zones. They're also known as entertainment districts. Some may suggest we sort of have one in the form of Penn's Landing, uh, generally. Does the city actually need to find a place where it can call it a hospitality zone, and what do you think it should be used for? You know, as I see Center City Philadelphia, since most people who come here, at least to Philadelphia, tend to stay in the general area of where we are uh, right now, sitting at Independence Hall, I would say that's generally from the riverfront where we have opened the park, uh, the leisure park. Uh, I think we can make better use of that part of our city. I believe that for the past, I don't know, 50 years since Jim Tate was the mayor, we've been fighting over what should be at Penn's Landing, and it's still an unfinished uh, painting. Uh, I believe that uh, there should be, a, the, the mayor's office should be the driver, uh, along with the Penn's Landing Corporation and everybody else, to make um, that part of the city, the riverfront, the stunning jewel in the crown of uh, travel and tourism. It's getting better, but it needs so much more. So if you figure it goes from the river to the art museum, uh, from, the, from the Delaware to the art museum, and generally speaking from, I'll say, Vine to, let's say, Pine or below, uh, we could have various pods of hospitality information. I think we need more of, in the way of information and assistance to tourism. Uh, so right here in Independence Mall, we have a visitor center. At 17th uh, or 16th and JFK, we have that donut, and I'm not sure what it is. It's sort of a, I don't know, it's sort of a no man's land. I, I, I don't know what that's supposed to be. It started off uh, uh, auspicious enough, but it's sort of fallen into a uselessness. I think we have to do something to attract that. I, I think we should make uh, Penn's Landing have a, a, an information center. And it's not bad at all to turn, uh, and we have to some extent, our, our um, center city district uh, men and women who are sprucing up Philadelphia and wear uniforms, our great goodwill ambassadors. So I don't know that we need a tourism center per se. We already have the beginnings of that. I think we just need to do more. For example, increase and enhance signage so when the arrow points that way, it just doesn't end in no man's land. And I, I do believe that will, that will help with, uh, with tourism. Anthony Williams, we should all spend a few moments to thank a man named William Penn for making our streets go like this and like this. They're very easy to navigate. A lot of people like the fact that Philadelphia is a walkable city. 
You've seen this new trail along the Schuylkill River uh, be put up. It's very popular. It's beautiful. Do you foresee anything else that we can do around the city like that? Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff we can do around that. Matter of fact, I was at a forum. Uh, I think, uh, oh, another one of those, yes. Uh, <laughs> where uh, we talked about mobility in the city of Philadelphia. They had a lot of great ideas with regard to how we move around the city and use the space that we actually have. Uh, biking, hiking, walking, jogging. I don't do a lot of jogging. Um, a variety of other things in that regard. And the investment that we have made through the private sector and the public sector in terms of partnership to expand those areas is a, the dynamic behind it. And I think that, frankly, is the, one of the most significant things that um, sort of illuminates those of us who are concerned about how we build out the opportunity for tourists to get beyond the limited space of Center City is around this space of what we do and invest in terms of privately and publicly. And I will remind us, though, by the way, that we're on these forums and they are recorded and people remind the truth. So I was at a mobility forum when everybody talked about they rode bikes. I was the only person who confessed I actually rode in a car. Now people are talking about they all use Uber. I'm not sure how you do both. I guess you put the bike on top of the Uber. I'm not sure how it works, but <laughs> I just want to make sure. There is a record of truth. Our next question goes to Melissa Murray Bailey. What do you see are the biggest challenges to grow the hospitality industry, and how would you do it, and with whose money? I think uh, there's a couple of challenges. One we've talked about a little bit already, um, which is the, the perception and the differentiation of Philadelphia and what we can offer. Um, in my job, I uh, run a market research firm, and we focus on branding companies um, so that students will want to go and work for those companies. Um, I think we could really leverage some market research um, in order to understand what we can do to set Philadelphia apart. What's going to make someone want to take their kids on a history buff run and go to Philadelphia versus Washington, D.C., or versus Williamsburg? Um, until we have that data and we know what we can do, um, we're not going to be able to really set ourselves apart. So the money that we invest uh, might not get us the returns that we're looking for. Um, and so that's really what I want to do across all phases of government is make sure that we have measurement in place so that we have the right programs that are going to deliver the results that we want. Um, I've been in about 50 airports across the past five years in over 20 countries. Um, I've seen what other people are doing and how they're welcoming people into their city and the types of approaches that they have to make themselves more visitor friendly. And I think I can bring that perspective in partnership with what you all are already doing um, to allow us to really um, get even more people to come into the city. Doug Oliver, the mayor of Philadelphia is also an ambassador to the world and is supposed to bring business here. Uh, what type of ambassador would you be, and how many trips would you take on taxpayers' dime to try and build more business interests? Some of them are criticized, you know, whether you're a mayor or a governor or the president. Uh, you're spending taxpayers' money. Talk about that as well. That question's not fraught with danger at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think that a role of a mayor is to be a vision setter, to be a team builder, to be a, a strong communicator, and to be a cheerleader. Uh, the two that most directly uh, equate to or relate to uh, the tourism hospitality industry is the first and the last. Uh, being a vision setter and setting the broad definition of what, who we are as a city, what we want to be, and creating the identity for at least the four to eight years that the mayor has uh, to put his or her or his fingerprint uh, on the city of Philadelphia's timeline. Um, with respect to uh, being a cheerleader, though, you have to go out there and promote yourself. You have to go out there and get people. Um, if no one else was promoting themselves, then we might not have to promote ourselves. But we know that everyone else is pushing their products, everyone else is pushing their people, uh, their places, and if we don't keep up with that, we won't get the, 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 the return on that investment. I think the mayor is the face of your city. If you want people to know that you're progressive, if you want people to know that you're forward thinking, if you want people to know that your city is exciting, if you want people to know that your city is youthful, if you want your city to know all of the. No, no. I'm just second. It's a youthful, vibrant I'm just city. That. <laughs> and I'm just suggesting that you create the identity that you want and you show that. When we said, get your history straight and your nightlife gay, we sent a message, a message that has paid off for us. We started to attract all sorts of different 
communities to the city of Philadelphia because they saw that that was important. When you have a city where the average age is 33 years, you've written a check already. People bought that. They came. The question is now what we do with it. How much more are we going to continue to push in the pipeline so we start to see the benefit on the back end? If you think that the 50,000 people that are in this city knew that weren't here seven years ago came by accident, then you're fooling yourself. It was promotion. These are the things we have to think of. And so, yes, the mayor must travel. And yes, that's part of the taxpayer's uh, responsibility to fund. We're going to take some audience questions in a little bit. So if you can start thinking of yours, uh, we'd be happy to bring you up and uh, ask some questions of the candidates. Up next, Jim Kenney. What are Philadelphia's greatest assets and what <clears throat> is holding us back? Well, I think our greatest asset is our people. I mean, with the earlier question when we started this conversation was about you know, the gritty Philadelphian with the, with the bad Philadelphia reputation. I find Philadelphians extremely friendly, and I think, um, and it's extremely fun. I mean, I just spent some time uh, campaigning. I've been uh, from South Philadelphia, but I did some campaigning on East Patrick Avenue. And you go in, inside and out of those shops, and people are giving you mozzarella cheese. And there's, I mean, it's just, <clears throat> it's just a wonderful experience. And I think that people, when they come here uh, and they meet our people, I think that they understand that that is the case. Uh, and we just have to get them here, and we have to get them here by marketing our city. Uh, for, one, for every $1 we spend in marketing and promotion, we get $4 back in return. That's not a bad deal. That's an excellent deal. And I think that the Commonwealth has lost sight sometimes of that fact. Um, our biggest challenge is, is, is our resources and, and, the, and the, our ability to get our face out there, to get our name out there, uh, and, to, and to overcome some of the issues relative to, to what people perceive as a city experience. Because uh, our city experience is awesome, I think. And I think yeah, it's walkability, it's, it's culture, it's history, it's people, it's ethnic and multicultural neighborhoods. I mean, it, we just got, I think we got a lot going for us. We just have to make sure that people, when they're getting dressed in the morning like I was this morning, see two or three commercials about Philadelphia, I think we'll, we'll be way on our, well on our way to, to really making this town a big splash. Nelson Diaz, how much politicking would you do at big conventions when they come to town, or small ones, or medium-sized ones, to try and generate more business, not only with the convention center, but with the city of Philadelphia broadly? Well, if I could either walk, bike, or take Uber, <laughs> or take all of my transportation that I have here, you know, I've got rail, metro, Amtrak, Smart Trip, and even the, the regional rail. Some people have never seen a regional rail in this uh, panel. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, uh, Tony didn't even go to the mobility uh, conference. He sent, a he sent a person over there, and all of a sudden he's an expert on that. So you got to see that you got to be able. You got to you got to be able. Yeah, he sent a representative. So you got to be able. You have to be able to welcome the people that come to the city. You have got to go to as many conventions as possible to let them know that the mayor is interested in them coming back. And you have to use whatever resources you have in the city to let them take tokens back so they can remember. Um, I, I can recall, you know, all these little bells that we essentially have, and that there are major conventions here. We should be able to distribute a lot of these little bells so people can go back and remember, hey, Philadelphia is that crack bell city, you know? <laughs> um, and, and, and you need to be able to let them know that they're welcome back and that they need to come back and see some of the things that they missed. And we need to publicize some of the things. That the best art in the world is here. The best uh, public park in the world is here. The best uh, people who are friendly, the best cheesesteak is here at Pat's Cheesesteaks. The best. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say the other one because they don't take people who speak Spanish. <laughs> You remember, you have to speak English if you go to Gino, so I can't go there. And this is my, my first language is Spanish. We've got to be able also to bring international conventions here so that we would be able to not be so monolingual in the city. Lynn Abraham, yes, think sir. big for us for a moment. Over the course of the next 10 years, name a few economic development projects you'd like to see. What's your wish list? Okay. First of all, that cracked bell is called the Liberty Bell. It's right across the street. Nelson and I are going to walk over there after this, uh, <laughs> after this forum. It's, 
called the Liberty Bell. Maybe that woman touch it in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody can touch it now, thankfully. Uh, I'll tell you what, Matt. I think a couple of things that we can think of as major projects are a velodrome. I know that there's a big dispute about the velodrome in Roosevelt Park. I'm not sure of the placement of it, and I understand people's oppositions to putting those things in the park, but I do believe that uh, either a velodrome would be an enormous uh, benefit to Philadelphia, not only for locals, but for people who love biking. I think the next big economic driver, I believe, can be um, over the long haul, and you said to think big, so I'm also thinking expensive, is the Reading uh, Trestle and the, uh, the Philadelphia's version of the High Line. This is not going to come from public uh, money alone. As a matter of fact, it's not going to come from mostly from public money. It's going to come from private philanthropic uh, monies. But I can tell you I've been in the High Line in uh, New York City, and it's just boom town. And that just spurs economic development along the Vine Street uh, Chinatown so that we can expand our city from Vine Street North uh, to Girard. And that is a place that is ripe for economic development. I also believe that we can expand uh, our love of tennis. We're a big tennis uh, place, and I think things are, uh, surrounding sports. We have lots of sports here already. I think we also have to promote uh, some of the things that are already here, uh, things like uh, the Reading Terminal as the oldest marketplace in the country, 107 years old. And I have to say I'm on the Reading Terminal Market Preservation Board, so that's a disclaimer. But I love the market, and I think it's uh, superb. And I think we can do more to promote the ethnic festivals that are here in Philadelphia. Uh, people have said, and it's all true, we know this, that we are a diverse city. We have the great Italian markets. We have Greek and every other ethnicity. Things we can do to promote our local folks who have come from all over the world are always big economic drivers. Anthony Williams, let's talk about technology and also social networking. I'll throw that in there as well. How can those two be used to enhance the tourism aspect of this city? Oh. Um, the first thing is it provides software, which I'm not sure why we don't invest in, provides the great equalizer in terms of language. We have, I can't speak how many languages we have visit or come here, but the truth is we have limited opportunities in terms of uh, translating that information or translating that language um, because of how we approach it. Technology is a great moment where you provide apps that allow those who can't speak that language the ability to interact with somebody who does speak that language. And so, we're going to use technology across city government, but we're going to use technology specifically in this space to make it easier for when somebody arrives at a hotel and speaks a language that we don't speak. Uh, and allows the hotel to provide, for us as a city, to provide a minor investment in the area. It provides also an opportunity for the generation that are here using technology and those who are building companies around te te technology to be integrated in this wonderful industry of, of tourism. Uh, the one thing I will close on this is I sense a complex here. I, I, Philadelphia is not a place through perception that is a bad thing. The DNC, we beat New York's butt. We won. They didn't. So from my perspective, this tone of like apologizing, people don't know us, without commercials, and I agree with commercials, word of mouth, industry, they want to be here. They're coming here. They want to find out what's going on beyond eds and meds. And so for me, I want to make sure we quell this perception that there is a perception problem in Philadelphia. There's a reality problem. We are moving forward, and you are leading it. Thank you. <coughs> Melissa Murray Bailey, along these same lines, how does Philadelphia compete with the other great cities of the world, where you have London, where you have Brazil, uh, Rio de Janeiro, you have uh, so many places in China that are, that are interesting to people? How does Philadelphia compete to get these people to come here? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we have to look at some of the, the challenges we have as a city, um, one being education. Um, and as we look at solving the education challenge and everything that comes with that, um, having our kids be more prepared for the workforce so that when people are coming, they're having great experiences in all of our hotels and restaurants and visitor centers. Um, it will also help us to have more people who are thinking about picking up the trash along the way. Um, so there are things that we're talking about through this campaign as some of the highest priority items that would allow us to compete on the national stage. Um, when people are looking at some of the challenges that we have with poverty and with education, um, it's not something that they say, oh, let me go to that city. That city is really thriving. 
Um, so we have to spend a lot more money on advertising than we would have um, otherwise. Um, and while technology is really great, um, we have things like Google Translate that already exist, um, so we don't need to spend any more money on that. Um, but if we can work with our school system to develop more language programs and bring those language programs back into the school, McCall Elementary School had a fantastic Mandarin program. Um, and imagine if we had lots of people in Philadelphia who were running around being able to speak Mandarin or Spanish or Russian because they were getting that in school, that would make us even more welcoming um, to people who are coming from out of town because we truly would be a global city that's able to welcome all types of people um, to Philadelphia. We are in round five, which is great. Would we like to do some questions now with the audience? Do we have someone who would like to ask a question? Go right ahead to the microphone, sir. And this question will be for Jim Kenny. Okay, Jim. Uh, I'd like to introduce a regional uh, aspect of the discussion. One of the great things about the Philadelphia area is in the suburbs, you can't go more than a couple miles without tripping over some terrific cultural or visitor attraction. How would you as the mayor... Hold on one second, sir. Uh, this question will be for Doug Oliver. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Can I tell you something for a second? Milton Street is not here, and in between him, uh, Melissa and Doug, and so that's why it's happening. Now you know. <laughs> This question is for Doug Oliver. You I can't it vote over? for any of them because I live in Bryn Mawr, but I do, <laughs> I do write checks. <laughs> okay, then over here then. So what I'd like to introduce, Doug, is a regional uh, aspect of the discussion. How would you, as the mayor, bring together the various uh, county officials and the convention and visitors bureaus that are all supported by similar room taxes to the city uh, to to bring about a real regional promotion for Philadelphia and the countryside? Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Um, those cultural institutions that you, you have to go a couple of miles to see, uh, we have them actually every couple of blocks here in the city of Philadelphia. And it's so very easy for us to sit here and brag about our city. But the truth is, to your point, um, this is a regional conversation. Um, there's $5.8 billion in economic impact in our region. I think Mayor Nutter's done a good job of the, the establishment of a metropolitan caucus where uh, leaders from surrounding counties as well as the city of Philadelphia come together uh, to talk about working together. Um, these discussions are beyond uh, just hospitality and tourism. I think it, it's infrastructure costs, all of those different things, uh, because they're the roadways when we brag about our, our access, our highways. Planes, trains, automobiles, and boats. When we talk about those things, they don't just land here like a helicopter. They go through other people's areas. So when we talk about how we make investments and where we make investments, it has to be a regional conversation. Even when we talk about funding our schools, we're talking about legislators in Harrisburg. Uh, we're talking about lots of different voices beyond just Philadelphia. So um, I think it's important, and I would, as mayor, recognize that while Philadelphia is the economic engine of this state, uh, there is still a state. Uh, there is still a region. There are still counties that, that care as much about their residents as we do about ours, and having them at the table when we talk about things, including tourism, um, is how I'd start. Another question from the audience, please. Anyone? Yes, sir. To the microphone. And this will be for Jim Kenny. Morning. Morning. Maybe a follow up question. Uh, as you all know, uh, no other urban center has as many cultural assets per capita as we do here in the Philadelphia region. And I think rightfully the tourism and hospitality industry has built out a brand for this market that attracts people because of those cultural assets. Post the recession, many of the not-for-profit organizations that support uh, the celebration and the accessibility of those assets have struggled financially I wonder uh, if you have a view uh, and a specific policy orientation towards supporting the not-for-profit sector for you to become mayor. Well, I, I served initially on the first cultural fund board, um, and that needs to continue to be robustly funded as best we can. Um, again, the arts and culture, hospitality and tourism is not just fluff. It's, it's, it's job creation, and it's, and it's an industry. And I think part of the problem is, is that we always look at I think the state government sometimes looks at it and says, well, that's kind of fun, but it's not necessary, and it is necessary. 
So I, I think the cultural fund is a, is a great way to continue to support those groups within the community. But I'll tell you, on both the, for the, from the art museum perspective, that's a big cultural institution. The amount of money that's generated from a huge, a huge exhibit there, uh, I think one year the Cezanne um, generated more revenue for the city than all the four sports teams put together. Uh, and Dave, I'm sorry, I I'm about to pick on you, but the Cezanne, the Cezanne exhibit created more revenue for the city than all of our sports teams together in that year. I think perhaps utilizing some of the, our efforts to bring those larger events there, because sometimes those events just need a little extra, just a little extra push as far as money is concerned to attract them there, and perhaps finding a way to, to utilize some of the revenue generated from a large cultural event to be able to filter down through the small cultural, cultural organizations. The other thing is that I've heard, I forget the lady's name, but she's, I think she's with Philodanko, uh, not Joe Myers Brown, but there was somebody who said one time at one of these forums, no more free tickets for anybody, Don't, no comps, because these organizations are, are, are driven by the revenue that they generate from their events. And I think that uh, we should make sure that we, we, spend, we pay for tickets uh, instead of trying to get, the, get stuff to give away. And I think that uh, continuing to support those neighborhood cultural groups is very important because it adds to the vibrancy of our, of our community. Another question from the audience, anyone over here? Yes, sir? And this question will be for Nelson Diaz. Okay. Um, wonderful topic, taxes, talking about taxes. Uh, from business tax to any, any, any tax, not all, any tax, but all taxes that as opening a new business or expanding your business, from our employees' wage tax, like across the board, you know, in our industry, in the hotel and restaurant industry, we're tax to almost to the hilt. Uh, can you talk about, you know, as far as reducing it or shifting monies around or how, how, how you know, and maybe more so, like, how, what is your plan for you know, going forward? Yeah, I, I have a, a detailed plan, so you know that it's, I'm not making this up, in my Nelson Diaz for Mayor.com website. And what I propose essentially is a reform of the tax system. If you look at most major cities, Washington, D.C., Chicago, New York, Baltimore, the weight of the taxes here is on the wage tax, the business tax, occupancy tax, and all those other complicated educational taxes that business people have to pay. And you usually need an accountant to be able to figure all of that out. While we only pay 16% of our city budget, is real estate taxes. Now, because of the uniform uh, constitutional requirement, you pay per capita the same taxes in terms of real estate that commercial properties pay. And so what I believe is that there should be, and this is a plan that has been uh, uh, supported by the Levy Group in Center City and supported by uh, many of the working class communities. So it's a plan that we all essentially, we have to reform that wage tax. That wage tax is regressive. We have to put a progressive tax in and we have to begin that constitutional amendment change to do that. Now, Lynn keeps telling me I can't do it in a year, but you got to start sometime. And so it takes, it may take you four years, it may take you one year. I believe that you can do it in one year if we talk about an emergency provision. And so get that progressive tax. Let's do the commercial tax appropriately and the real estate taxes to make that the 34%. And that way, it doesn't work that hard on the working class and the middle class communities of the city. And that's why I believe that your question is what has been a problem in us growing small businesses. We are 61%. We are close to Detroit in growing small businesses. I hate to compete with Detroit. We want to make sure that we compete with the other cities that are up to 76% in the development of small businesses. I hope you go to my website and see the details. Another rare chance for an audience member to ask a question of the mayoral candidates. This one, ma'am, will be for Lynn Abraham. Uh, Lynn, as a South Philly um, resident, how would you address residential parking? As the city grows, um, it's taking me longer and longer to actually park my car when I get home. And while public transportation is wonderful, if you're traveling outside of the city for a meeting, you do have to um, you do have to have some place to park. Well, I remember well um, Richardson Dilworth going to South Philadelphia and suggesting that everybody get off of South Broad Street, um, and uh, that was met with uh, 
eggs and um, lettuce and tomatoes being thrown at the then mayor. Uh, I, I think that what is happening is probably going to not be good news for you, but great news for Philadelphia. Uh, one of the things that we have to instill in people is the, is the need for use of more public transportation and not having a car. Obviously, if you're reverse commuting or you need your car for work, someplace else, I regret to say that you might have to use a car. But uh, I live in Center City, Philadelphia. Parking is always a premium. Residential parking permitting, I don't know if it's in your neighborhood, but obviously it gives priority to a resident who can park on limited time in a space, but it doesn't mean that the scramble is any less. One of the things that some of the blocks are capable of doing is putting in, instead of uh, horizontal parking, the slanted uh, parking, but many of our streets are too small to accommodate that. In addition to that, the growth, thankfully, of all these new ho homes and multifamily dwellings uh, put additional pressure uh, on parking. So if I had my druthers, I would uh, try to encourage as many people as possible to do what a lot of people are already doing, skating, walking, biking, uh, or using public transit, uh, which uh, doesn't have the need for an automobile. But I don't, I don't think South Philadelphia is, or any other part of the city is going to get any better. I, I don't have a, um, a, a, a sort of a magic bullet. One of the ways we can do it is increase the dependence on developers and our zoning boards to make sure that any multifamily dwelling has parking underneath that, that property, not in the ground necessarily, but underneath the house. Uh, other than that, we're, we're a car-loving city. It's always going to be a, a challenge. My house has a dedicated parking space. That would be something that developers ought to be required to look at. I'd like to get three more questions from the audience. You, sir, over there. And is there anyone over there? Okay, you'll be next. And this question will be for Anthony Williams. How you doing, Mr. Williams? How you doing? Um, I work at a front desk at a hotel here downtown. I'm a longtime Philadelphia resident, graduated from West Catholic. And it's no secret that the cost of living in this city and the wages uh, are sort of not matching. And I know that some of that has to do with time, long term. Um, it does become difficult to um, sort of recommend restaurants that I cannot afford to eat at myself. So, I, and I, own, I, own, I won't pretend that I'm smart enough to understand how business and all that works, but my question is, is as mayor, would you use your influence um, on hotel owners to increase wages? Would you use your influence to start more job training and internship programs for entry level positions from high school? And of welcoming new business owners, satisfying current business owners, and taking care of regular employees, uh, how would you prioritize as mayor? Thank you. Thank you. It's a great question. So the majority of the folks who are in this industry actually are um, those who started entry level, make modest incomes. And what people don't know is that, frankly, we want to pit those who are quote unquote executives and those who drive the businesses versus those who are making everyday wages. And the truth is that in the hotel industry, you make it on margin. You don't make a lot of money. And so we have to have volume as a part of it. And so, frankly, what the mayor should really be talking about is certainly how do we make those industries much more profitable so they can increase those wages as opposed to, to the tension of give them more money and don't give them much return. And so for me, yes, I think that all of some of the things that you mentioned, um, much more substantive training in terms of the industry so that, one, once you enter, you can grow faster. The opportunity that we can grow across the city of Philadelphia with, with the brands that we have currently and support them so they can be much more profitable. You talked about ancillary issues such as more conventions, more people coming here. All that adds value and profit to the bottom line. And when we get to the profit bottom line, then we can legitimately have conversations with those who are in industry to say we should support them more. Now, I've taken a very bold approach to the minimum wage. I believe we should increase it in terms of what the, what, what the, the city does. But I also believe that the pro private sector, and I believe in the marketplace, defining what those terms are, I really do believe that a good employer recognizes a happy employee is the best thing they, that they can actually have. The truth is, in your industry, there is a high level of turnover in cer certain jobs. Part of it is because of compensation. They want to keep good employees in those positions. They know they have to pay more, but we have to do more to drive the economy and make it a growth economy in Philadelphia. We tend to tax or cut. We need to face, we have to have a mayor who has a plan to grow the economy, to support your position as well as the industry's position. Another question from the audience on this side from Melissa Murray Bailey. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, I live at 8th and Morris Streets, which is just off East Passyunk Avenue. Uh, earlier in the debate, the idea, the topic of uh, cleaning city streets was brought up. And uh, I know that there was a bill proposed in city council to have uh, trash and recycling bins placed within a certain area of any place, restaurant, that serves takeout food. 
I was wondering if you would support that and if you had any other plans to help clean up the city streets. Yeah, I was um, watching a, um, a call-in show with Mayor Nutter from 2011 um, on, I think, maybe um, one of the news websites. And what really struck me about that was almost every one of the questions of people calling in was about trash in the city and trash collection. And I know, you know we are talking a lot about other things right now, but that really struck me. Um, and so uh, the mayor's response was, you know, I'm not your mother, please pick up after yourself. Um, so I thought that that was, that was really witty. Um, but I think we are at a, um, at a precipice now where we have so much trash everywhere that we do need to have a major effort to almost start from ground zero again and then encourage everyone to have pride enough to be throwing things out. And we need to have receptacles in order to do that. Um, my daughter and I, on the way to school every day, we pick up trash um, and we put it in a receptacle, but we have to carry it for four blocks before we find that. Um, so I think if we want people to pick up after themselves and pick up after others, we need to give them um, the, the means to do that. Um, and Doug Oliver says quite often that it's much less expensive to pick up the trash in the street um, than when it's in the water. Um, and I think that really goes to a root cause issue um, that I've been talking about a lot. We have to focus on the, the root cause and not the symptoms. Um, and if we make it easy for people to throw out their trash, I believe that people will do that. Um, so we need to do everything possible to do it. Um, and once you have a clean street, that one piece of trash that's on there stands out and hopefully we can count on one of our fellow Philadelphians to pick that up and put it in a really close by receptacle. Thank you, ma'am. We get one more question from the audience for Doug Oliver. Thank you. Um, I, would, I uh, walk the streets of Philadelphia every day and I, I'm uh, often walking down 17th Street and I see the, uh, the inflatable rat in front of the Weston Hotel. And, I, and uh, what I sense is a sort of a, an increase in the belligerence um, or aggressiveness of, of uh, the unions. Um, they're now on Rittenhouse Square in front of the hotel, sort of menacing, giving out um, materials, which is fine. I understand the freedom of uh, unions, and this is the birthplace of freedom, so I get all of that. But my sense is that the unions are, uh, are overstepping their boundaries. And I think if you're visiting Philadelphia from the Midwest and you come to the West and you see that inflatable rat and the sound of that baby on the loudspeaker, that you're not, pr you're not presenting a good, a good uh, image of this city. Should the mayor be involved in that? Is that something that somebody should try to get a hold of? Because it's been going on at the West End for at least six months, and I think it's disgraceful. So uh, I, that, that bothers me, and I love this city, so I'm not a person that looks to the negative, but I think it's out of, I think it's out of control. So I, I, would, I would like to hear your pr perspective of that. My general sense is uh, what you're talking about is, is an outcome of process gone wrong. Um, I think those sorts of demonstrations happen precisely because it's at the wrong time, uh, precisely because there's a lot of visibility and it's a, it's, a, it's a bully tactic designed to bring the mayor or some other party to the table for conversation. So I think the best way to deal with it is to have those conversations. Um, I don't see anything wrong with unions wanting management or leadership executive branch to come to the table. I don't see a problem with that same executive branch wanting negotiations and, and fair conversations with unions. Uh, when they go awry, we have these other challenges. When, when we talk about root problems and derivative, derivative problems, those are derivative problems. The root problem is uh, adults not being able to have conversations for the benefit of the city. So um, I quite frankly don't know how you stop unions from doing what unions do when they're disappointed with where they are. Uh, but I think the solution probably lies in fair, open, and honest conversations on the front end. Uh, when we're having discussions about economic wage uh, work rules and, and the like uh, related to uh, building trades and, and, and other unions. Thank you. We have time for one more round, and what I'd like to do is ask the same question to all of you, in all fairness, to close things out. So we'll start with Mr. Kenny. I uh, wanted to ask you about taxes. Uh, the wage tax has remained generally the same uh, over the recent years. Uh, the city sales tax has gone up, the real estate tax has gone up uh, more than once. Uh, tell us what your plans are with taxes, and if you feel like making uh, a tax pledge, no. by all means, go ahead. Would, would you not raise any taxes and reduce them? 
pledges do not work. You've, see, you've seen what pledges have done to Washington and to Harrisburg. Grover Norquist has more influence over some of those folks than their own constituents. Um, the, the tax issue in Philadelphia took a long time to build. Since 1997, through, through the Rendell administration, have been ongoing reductions in wage and business taxes. It's, it's been an ongoing reduction. It's been the small one, but it's, it's, it's going down. They were, they were suspended over two, two or three years by Mayor Nutter, understandably, during the midst of this major recession that we, we went into. They went in back into effect again. You can't, if you want, if you, I could sit here and say, in four years, I'm going to cut a point off the wage tax. And everybody in this room is going to really hate me because the level of services that we would be able to provide would be pretty poor. So the deal is, as mayor, the ability to balance tax reductions and service delivery. I mean, it's not just about reducing taxes. It's also about having an environment in a city that wants pe what makes people want to come here and also make people want to live here. So yes, we would continue to, continue to reduce those taxes. When we have years when we can accelerate those tax reductions, we will. And we'll continue to drive it down. Uh, the issue on, well, on real estate taxes, I think the, it's unfortunate uh, that, the, that the mayor did this real estate tax um, uh, plan uh, in the middle of this whole election process because it's all going to get lost in the, in, in the, in the, in the weeds. Uh, I voted for a real estate tax increase in an election year because the choice was the schools were going to close. So, I mean, you have to base each of your moves and each of your uh, policies based on the reality of what you're dealing with at the time. So I, I don't tend to make pledges. I don't think they're really, they're really beneficial. Uh, and I do think that we do need to reduce taxes, and we need to do it. We need to do it intelligently, and we need to do it in a way that grows our economy, so more pe more people are paying taxes. Therefore, we have the ability to reduce taxes. I do believe that the Sweeney Levy proposal should be vetted. Uh, the increase in commercial real estate taxes to take that extra revenue and plow it back in with, to accelerate the business and wage taxes may be a way to go. We'll have to study it. Nelson Diaz and taxes. I gave you uh, a, p a proposal. Nobody else has given you a proposal, and I believe that proposal will help us develop a thriving city. Um, one of the things that I really treasure about this community is the people that have worked so hard to make sure that this works. You know, you you got Merle Levitz, who I've worked with since the Columbus statue was built, and down in uh, the waterfront, and then Jack Ferguson, who really uh, has done everything in the hotel industry and everything in the convention center. And a guy who didn't have to do it, you know. I've been trying to serve the community for 45 years, and Manny Stamakakis has been there chairing, whether it's whatever opportunity he can to contribute. And that I'm very proud of what you do, and it's important to be able to support you since you, uh, there is a, a tough, tough job to do, and you've kept our economy going. And so that we have to make sure that we keep this opportunity continuing and growing and the only way you're going to do it is one you've got to get a better education system we got to get some jobs we got to reduce the criminal uh, issues that occur in our city and we have to make sure that you look at my tax proposal that tax proposal is what makes the engine run people go over to the other side of city line avenue just to avoid the four percent tax and what play games with it every time you need it you go up down you go up down it's a yo-yo Let's get rid of that tax and let's make it a progressive one so that it doesn't fall so hard on small businesses. We have to grow the small business community. They are the biggest engine of employment. It's not the big companies that are the engines of employment like Comcast. And I've done economic development. You guys who are in that industry know it. I've done neighborhood development. I've done that. That still works today. But if we can get rid of that, we have to reform the tax structure to be able to make it palatable for business communities to come here and grow. Lynn Abraham and your position on taxes in the city. Well, my position on taxes in the city is that uh, the wage tax structure as currently in place is a job killer. Uh, it's also the business taxes and other taxes and problems with regard to how the city uh, governance works with regard to attracting business is a business killer. So I believe that um, while I think that the Levy-Sweeney uh, idea is interesting, I think essentially it is unworkable. And I think it's unworkable because the a change in constitution can't be done in one year. It has to be done in two successive sessions of the House and Senate. Then it has to be put on the ballot. Uh, and um, I believe that uh, this is not going to work because of the disincentive for Harrisburg to do that. No disrespect to Tony over here to my left, but the rest of Pennsylvania 
uh, doesn't exactly support that. So I believe we have to do something else. The Levy-Sweeney plan, if you will, I think can be uh, handled by decoupling uh, real estate from commercial taxes on a voluntary basis. What I plan to do is have a, uh, the minute I'm uh, winning the May 19th primary, I'm going to convene a, a, a a conclave of stakeholders, business and other interests that will sit around the table who have always complained about our tax structure and say, come up with a workable plan that I could consider as mayor to put in effect, which will lower the wage taxes, which will decouple um, the, uh, the commercial versus residential without the need of a constitutional amendment, but making sure, and I think business will like this because I'm a pro-business person, business will like it if they say, I will give a tax uh, incentive uh, to a program voluntarily if I am sure that the money I'm paying in taxes goes where it's supposed to go in reducing uh, wage taxes and business taxes. And I think the mayor of Philadelphia can do that, and I certainly would. So my position is wage taxes are disincentives for businesses to come here. Our, our entire tax structure disincentivizes uh, companies from coming here, and we have to change the whole way we think about taxes and do business in the city, which I am prepared to do. What would taxes be like in an Anthony Williams administration? They'd be cut. Uh, and I think people need to understand, those who are OK with the status quo should vote for somebody else. We're going to cut taxes in Philadelphia, because the bottom line is it doesn't work for regardless of who you are. And that means if you're an investor or a person who's in high school in Philadelphia trying to find a job. The reality is that we talk about, every time we have a budgetary problem in Philadelphia, we have one mix. We either increase the tax on a hotel or something else, or we cut a program. Nobody has the vision to recognize we have to grow the economy. You have to have a plan that meets that need immediately. Small business investment, a municipal bank driving out capital to neighborhoods would put people back to work that have not been employed in generations. Technology, which is growing here in a hub dramatically, those folks that brain drain, well, guess what? They're stopping. They're staying here. We need to support them with a tax, poli po tax policy that's not regressive. The energy hub that we talk about employs those who are re-entering society, those who are high school dropouts, those who are high school, graduate, high, high school graduates, along with a college PhD, along with a foreign investor, along with a lawyer, a, a lawyer with a, 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 an architect. You have to have a mayor who has a vision to say, we can no longer do it by increasing taxes or cutting programs. You have to have a strategy. It is to, to make Philadelphia no longer the 15th big city that grows at, the, at, at a stagnant rate and have someone who knows how to drive Harrisburg. And with all due respect to my friend to my right, the Sweeney plan is what Pennsylvania craves. Anybody who says in Harrisburg, we can cut your property taxes, they want that plan. And yes, it's not a short-term plan. Yes, it requires investment. But I agree with my friend Nelson Diaz. It is not something we should, should throw to the side. So ultimately, I'm more than happy to talk about commitments to cutting the wage tax, because it will make more taxpayers come to Philadelphia. It is a smart thing to do. It's long awaited for. And somebody has to say on this platform, I'm going to do it. I'm willing to say, I'm going to do it. Melissa Murray Bailey, what would you do about taxes if you were mayor? Uh, the first thing I would do about taxes is make sure that we're collecting the taxes that we're owed. Um, on Wednesday, Philadelphia Magazine did a great article that highlighted some of the, the challenges and basically um, egregious oversight that we have of the tax collection. There are $1.3 billion in uncollected taxes. So before we start talking about raising anybody's taxes, we need to talk about how are we actually going to collect those taxes. Um, we have the liquor tax, um, and every bar and restaurant is putting that on your bill, but then we're not collecting it back. Um, we have lots of property owners who are not paying their taxes. So as you're writing your check on Wednesday on tax day, you know, you should feel great that you're doing your part, but so many are not. Um, and so we need to look at where are taxes that are owed that can be paid, and we need to make sure that we pay them. And then we need to look at where are there taxes owed that can't be paid, and we need to figure out a solution for that. Um, so that's first and foremost. The second thing I would do about tra taxes is increase transparency on where the taxes are going and how they're being spent, because I think everyone has a right to know where the money they are spending and they're working so hard for every day um, is going. And then I think, finally, we need to look at prioritization of tax dollars. You know, we are saying that we don't have the money to fund the schools, but that's because we're prioritizing other things above that. 
you know, there are things we could do to give more money to the schools, but we would just have to take out other things. Um, and I think there are wild inefficiencies in many of our programs, um, and it's because we haven't set goals that we want the programs to accomplish. So everyone is just saying, you know, I want more money, um, but then when we look at where that money is going to, it's really hard to see the outcome. Um, so there's some of the, the key things that I would do on taxes, um, even before uh, we start talking about the tax reform that's necessary. Taxes and Doug Oliver. Um, I'll pick up by echoing uh, what uh, Melissa just said, that we do have to start with collecting the taxes that are already owed. I understand it's a half a billion dollars that's owed, and I also understand that a lot of that's just not going to be collectible, and it's just one-time money. Uh, but I'd argue if I owed you $50 million one time, you'd still want it. There's still a lot of value associated with collecting that one-time money because there's lots of things that we could do, including more advertising and promoting the, the, the city that we have. So um, even if that's what we did with it, and I'm not I'm just brainstorming, but there's different ways of, 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 of looking at the tax structure. More specifically to the question of what should be done, I agree with others up here uh, that wage taxes and business taxes are business killers. Uh, but I also want to say that our tax structure, as uncompetitive as it is, is not the primary reason why businesses don't come. They don't come because our schools aren't good. They don't come because their employees can't educate their kids in the city. So the biggest thing we can do to attract businesses to the city of Philadelphia is fix our schools. And I don't want that to be lost in the, in the more boring conversation about numbers. But that said, I would and I do support the Levy plan uh, that would reduce wage and business tax. I think we tax the very things that have the most mobility, the things that can leave easily. And when they get frustrated, they leave Philadelphia. And let's not confuse ourselves that they're leaving us for New York City or Chicago. That's sexy. No, they're leaving us to go across to New Jersey. They're leaving us to go to Montgomery County uh, just across the bridge so they can avoid the wage tax. They're very mobile, and we, choose, we cause them to exercise that mobility. Same thing with businesses. We create a structure where they can't grow, so they leave. At the same time, the very area where we have a little bit more elasticity, which is in our property taxes, which everyone knows is more affordable than anywhere else in the country, we are undertaxing. And it also is that those same taxes fund our schools. This is a system, and it's a circular problem. So I am supportive of reducing business and wage with a dollar-for-dollar dollar increase in property and a slow, methodical pace, because uh, Councilman was correct that we need these money, this money to run our city, and we can't cut so quickly that we can't provide services and I tie an accelerator so that more jobs created, I know I'm, more jobs created faster than the reduction. Each candidate will get one minute for a closing statement. We begin with Nelson Diaz. Yeah, I'm running for mayor because I know how hard it is to grow up poor and struggle to get ahead. I'm running for mayor because I believe that I know what it takes to make sure that we fix our schools since I have had the opportunity to be an executive and to be able to change things, change agent, whether it's reforming public housing as a general counsel, whether reforming the court system as its administrative judge, or whether it's helping develop neighborhood economic development areas in the city. I'm running because I believe that I can be the mayor that can unify the city and can bring about the changes in the tax structure, can bring the changes to bring small businesses back to the city, can be the agent that will be able to get the SRC eliminated because we need the parents to run that school system so we can avoid all the issues that relate to that and so that we have local control again and so that if we do the changes in the taxes we'll be able to form our own destiny. I'm running for mayor because I have been here for 45 years doing it Time for is up. free. Jim Kenney. Thank you for being here. Um, I've worked with everyone in this room in one way or another uh, over my career. And the commitment that I'll make to you is that as mayor, I will, I will make tourism and hospitality the, the highlight that it should be. We will support in every way and every effort uh, the, the efforts that you make every day to bring people to this town, to stay in our hotels, to spend in our restaurants, to see our culture, to bring conventions here, to bring just vibrancy and revenue uh, to our city. Uh, and I understand I, from working with you all the intricacies and issues that you deal with in your own individual uh, in economies, your own individual jobs, how, what hotel, the dynamic of hotels, the dynamic of, of the convention center, the dynamic of labor, how we bring them all together and make it work by dealing with each other on a forthright and upfront basis, listening to your ideas, 
moving forward with your plans and getting this done to make this city the most attractive city for tourism and hospitality in the country. Thank you. Melissa Murray Bailey. I'm running for mayor, um, and I'm a shrewd businesswoman. Don't let this little exterior fool you. I, throughout my career, have built and turned around businesses. And what I'm going to bring to government is a new perspective and viewing it through a new lens. I've seen a lot of other things, and I can see what Philadelphia can be. And I truly believe that we can do that. I think we need to work together. I think we need to bring government and all of the other groups that are trying to do things for the benefit of Philadelphia together. We have so many groups out there that are doing things despite um, what City Hall has been doing. Imagine if we could bring the things together under a common goal and work towards those goals. Um, then Philadelphia can truly be able to accomplish everything that I can see for it. Anthony Williams. Thank you all for being here this morning. I am bullish on Philadelphia, and I'm bullish on all of you who are in this room. And I'm bullish not because of what I potentially see, but because of the reality. This industry is growing. And this industry represents the most integrated economic relationship across the city of Philadelphia. Those who are high school graduates and those who are PhD are all participants. But business owners, big business owners, and small business owners are all part of this network. And I want you to be very clear that you have to have someone who has a plan, not just a thought, but a plan for economic growth to make sure that the growth continues to happen in Philadelphia. A person who builds consensus, a person who knows how to build consensus, whether it's in Harrisburg, Washington, D.C., or Philadelphia, and I've done it at all three levels. A person who, yes, <laughs> and people haven't talked about this, in that convention center, which is full of tension but now is actually growing, yes, I was endorsed by the carpenters. I'm also endorsed by the laborers. These realities, I know how to build my friends and, and cross bridges. I know, and even in tough times, differ with my friends. You have to have a mayor who has a vision for one city, not one section of the city. Lynn one Abraham. Thank you. It's a joy to be here today. I am a lifelong Philadelphian who is just mad about the city. I'm a proud Philadelphian who boosts Philadelphia every place I go. And I'm going to do the same job as mayor of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is really on a roll. And people live for the city of Philadelphia are looking for a new kind of leader, someone who's strong and fearless, who's independent, who's not owned by anybody, and is ready to make the changes that we need to change Philadelphia's future all for the better. We are on a roll. Great things are going to happen. I'm going to change the education system for the better so that our children are not cheated out of the quality education that they deserve. Enhance safety and security so people have, feel safe in this city and even safer than they do now. Just grow business like crazy, from the CEP at the airport to an energy hub, to jobs, to taxes, tourism, marketing, you name it, and I'm going to do it. I have the experience to lead from day one. I have the capacity and have built collaborative relationships, and I'm a team builder. And at the end of the day, when you vote on May 19th, I'm going to be nobody's mayor but yours, Lynn Abraham. Doug Oliver. I said at the beginning that my campaign is focused on schools, jobs, and fairness, and so almost everything that I look at, including tourism and hospitality, will be through those lenses. I think the tourism and hospitality industry has done its part. It's done a fantastic job with limited resources and obviously could use more, but you've got people interested in the city of Philadelphia and coming to give us a test drive. I think it's now then time for the city to close the deal. They come because they're interested, and it's what we do with l and I that'll keep them here, what we do with our schools that keep them here, police, streets, zoning. That's how they'll experience us once they come. Um, I'm running for mayor because I want to bring a different perspective to the challenges that have faced us for many years. Um, I've experienced this city uh, from poverty I've, to the point where I now have choices. I've experienced every single neighborhood across the city. I'm fully born and raised, and I want to bring those experiences, my empathy for those that don't have, uh, to my relationships with those that do to bridge the gap and to create different opportunities. I want to leverage technology and innovation I'm running not for young people, but I recognize that it's about, and I think together, all of these uh, perspectives will make me an ideal candidate, and I ask for your consideration on May 19th. I'd like to personally thank all the candidates here, Nelson Diaz, Lynn Abraham, Anthony Williams, Doug Oliver, Jim Kenney, Melissa Murray Bailey. It's been my pleasure to serve as your moderator as well as all of you. Thanks so much for joining us. May 19th is primary day. I'm Matt O'Donnell. I'll see you Monday morning. <laughs>